Welcome back to the channel. Now, today is going to be kind of a repeat uh, video, at least topic. I'm going to be adjusting the brakes, the clutches, and the uh, the all the linkages for for you know the brakes and the clutches and all that. And on these machines, pretty simple. Pretty much all you need is an adjustable and a 916 wrench, which I have over there. And I don't even want to hear a comment about this thing. I know I need a filter. I'm getting it tomorrow. Um, it actually doesn't look horrible for me here. But when you pull it out, that's uh, it's pretty much all rust in there. It's really gross, actually. And uh, I really got to change it. Um, but back to the machine. So basically what I have going on is that the left side worked fine. Um, fine enough where I've never run a bulldozer before and it worked. So I thought it was fine. And the right side, when you pulled the lever, you could feel resistance, like the clutches were trying to grab, but it just wasn't having it. And I found the culprit. So first thing you gotta do is adjust your uh, your free travel. And actually, I should probably go get that manual. Um, I know what order to do it in my head, but in case someone wants to, uh, to read the manual, at some point here, I'll bring it out and then I'll do like a slow video or even I'll just skim through the two pages there and you guys can pause it and read the manual um, so you don't have to listen to me blabber about it. And you can just look at that and then do your thing. Because uh, everything's said in there. And uh, which is really nice when I bought the machine. It came with the original manual for the whole thing. and it was, It's awesome just reading through it and seeing how John Deere back in the 70s wanted you to do things. It was pretty neat. Um, but first thing you do is adjust the free travel. And I did that the other day. So... It was when I was doing that, when I was doing that part of the road, the little bridge to cross my pond, I was doing it with just the one side, like, like I've always been running it. And little doggy's upset over there. What are you doing? Anyway, um, so I built the little cross in the same way I was using this thing before, just the left side. And it was fine. I was getting used to it. And I had to go reverse, turn one direction, forward, turn the other. And everything is fine. And then all of a sudden the right side started working. I was like, oh, it's pretty neat. And like three seconds later, they both stopped working. When I pulled the left one, the bull track stopped. The right side didn't do anything anymore. It was just a shit show and I couldn't move anymore. And uh, so I had to park it. And then inconveniently, the next day we were supposed to get a snowstorm. And they were calling for like a foot. And luckily we only got like, I think we got less than five inches. But it was super wet. It was like 32 degrees 31 to like 33 the whole time so it was super wet snow and i was worried if we actually got a foot i might need this thing to bulldoze my road out uh, just so i can drive and because the old jeep's pretty tired and the truck's out by the gate so i had to get to the truck so i really wanted to make this thing work so i can get out there so i started messing with the free travel it pretty much what i had here this left one's like pretty mint now um this machine wants an inch and a quarter to inch and a half as the spec John Deere gives you. Um, and they had both more than three, both sides. Um, more than three inches of travel. And that's no bueno. <laughs> Silly dog. And, uh, and then it started snowing pretty hard. And inconveniently, the beginning of the storms when all the snow happened. And we got like three inches in one hour. And uh, the uh, the area where you know, all these clutches are and such, um, it's a dry casing. I really didn't want to get a lot of snow in there, so I backed off her for the uh, for the day. After adjusting free travel, didn't really change anything. And I'll I'll take the seat off and I'll show you these uh, these housings, and then take those covers off and I'll show you all the magic. So all I've taken off so far is uh, these little foot trays on both sides. And that axis is your brake linkage, which is that guy. And then you take the seat out, and under this cover is all your steering clutches. Or like, the, so there's two screws. I'll, I'll show you those. And I'll pop these off real quick. And then down here, in between the track and the uh, the boxes, is another door. And that's how you adjust your brake band. So I'll pop all those off for you real quick, and we'll get into it. So. I took all the cases off. As you can see, that's what it looks like in there. Then over here. This one's only wet because I threw some liquid wrench in there. Um, because the brake, uh, the bell crank actuator bolt uh, doesn't like life. And, yeah. 
then this is what this cage looks like um, that nut right there in the middle that's what adjusts the brake band and we'll be getting to that uh, pretty shortly actually uh, I want to show you guys all this free play in the cylinders here um, so this is the right side and basically right at the end of the free play you can see it start to move and this one's in pretty good shape you can move it you can pull the cylinder and nothing happens like the whole cylinder doesn't move um, but this side different story I think these pins are pretty worn out probably from for a long time only using this side um, I don't know if those are I can actually adjust those I don't really know how that how that one works to be honest with you so um, we'll cross that bridge another day but what what we got going on here is uh, to I'll show you guys how to adjust that free play and pretty much to do so is uh, you so in the buck you loosen that jam nut and you loosen that jam nut Basically free up those a little bit on both sides. And to do your free play, um, you have it set where it is all the way down on the stops. You take this jam nut off, and then the end of this cylinder is, is a nut, but it's only slaughtered on the on two of the sides. So and the other sides are just round. So when you loosen that off, you'll spin it. Um, spin it that direction so ten is so counterclockwise on the cylinder and then that'll that'll reduce your free play and then when you're done you just retighten it and then uh you retighten the jam nut when you got it to where you want it uh manual steering models are inch and a quarter to inch and a half power steering models are inch and a half to two inches i believe and uh so get that within whatever spec you need and then you retighten that jam nut, and that's how you adjust the, the free play. And then once you're done with the free play, you pretty much throw throw something underneath these stops to keep this at you know the free play out of it. You take the free play away or the uh, free travel. Uh, you take that right away once you start adjusting your actual brake band. And you can't adjust any of the clutches um, because the whole clutch pack. But you can adjust the brakes on the clutches. And that's pretty much where this machine's gone wrong. I think the guy before tried to adjust them. And basically it's tightened all the way and then said it still didn't work. And left it like that. But that's not right. So there's a few things here. Like uh, this, the brake pedal isn't on the stop. You can pull it back to the stop, but it's not on the stop. And this pedal is almost no, no give the other direction. So I'm going to need to undo the linkages there when we tighten things up to uh, get that pedal back to where it wants to be so it's not constantly dragging on this uh, on the brake system here. So we'll get into that pretty shortly. So she's a little greasy, but this is the manual. I'll show you the two bolts. If it's all fucking steady, someone might be able to read it. This is that bolt down there to adjust the brake band. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So, now that you got that, we're going to start actually adjusting things. Um, I did that slowly for you, so if you wanted to read it and pause it, and now I'm just going to go go back over it. Um, we're going to start with one, and move on to two on both of them, and we're just going to move through the whole thing. Um, basically, loosen the jam nut on that one. I threw some of that, that liquid wrench on there. Hopefully, that, that loosens up. Last time, I had no luck. 
and it could not be turned. Um, there's no anti-seize on any of this. Um, if you take it all apart and put anti-seize, you'll, you'll be a much better place when you ever adjust it again. And then same thing with jam nut. Uh, this left side's got a jam nut, but the right side does not. It's just a locking nut, and that's not very, not very bueno. Oh, take this freaking camera mount off. It's got magnetic feet, which is cool until everything's metal around here, and I reach in here and it gets stuck to everything. So yeah, I want the locking washer. With these two, the two nuts, your jam nut, then your actual adjustment nut, like it should. So we're gonna break those free and uh, get back to step three. So we're pretty much only gonna do the right side because the left side's so frozen on there and they also, they also, the left side works. Um, but I'd like to adjust it, but they're so frozen. I'm gonna, I know I'm just gonna break the bowl at some point and uh, not ready to come off. So we're just gonna do the right side. And number three is basically to block up your free travel. Keep that out of the way. Um, now, we're going to go down below and adjust the the brake band. We're going to back it off. Or actually, no. We're going to completely tighten it. And uh, and then, the next one, we're going to adjust the brake yokes. Um, so that's basically down here. Is We're going to completely tighten that guy up. Then we're going to go up here. And we're gonna mess with uh, with some of these yokes on both sides. Uh, this is the best thing I had here to keep this, and it doesn't even fully get it, but it's closer than it was. So that's what I'm gonna go with. So just gonna move on like so. It's a little bigger than a three quarter, I believe, or it was just turned at a point where my three quarter wrench couldn't get on it. Um. And then so we're gonna tighten this up all the way and honestly I feel like this this moved it's moved a little bit this last time I was in here because this feels kind of tight There you go. And in theory, this should only be like a turn or whatnot because it should be like a turn and a quarter loose. So it shouldn't necessarily be a whole lot, but you never know what we're going to get into. Okay, I'm going to call that tight. Next thing we're going to do is move up to uh, adjust these rods. And I do need to adjust this on the other one too, so... It's kind of a bummer, but the other side works. Problems with adjusting these rods, I, they kind of go together. Um, but we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna see if I can take any slack out. So, I'm having a pretty tough time getting those pins out. And basically what what's happening is that they're way too um, loose. You gotta be tightened up a lot. Because as you see, when I'm pulling the brake pedal back, it's pushing the stops back and it's actually bending this rod down. So basically the reason why the pedal's not all the way back is because they're so far out of the on the rod that uh, the yokes are so far out on the rod that it's pushing the brake pedal to be there for it to not be doing anything. And I don't, I don't understand why it's having such a hard time. Um, yeah. 
I don't understand why it's having such a hard time getting that pin out because it's uh, there's no cotter pin on it either. So they're like really in there. So I, I can't get that pin out. I tried driving a screwdriver in it to get the head out. Try screwing the pry bar, getting the pry bar in there, pop, trying to pop it out. Uh, nothing was working. And this side's even harder. I really don't understand how someone would do that. I mean, there's just so much stuff in the way. You can't really get down there very easily. So I'm going to call this okay for the old machine. Definitely not ideal. But if I tried to do this the right way, it's probably going to take me a little while. And uh, I want to slap this thing back together and get it so I can at least get it to function. So I'm actually going to back off the brakes on this side, just a whisker. It's pretty much immediately when I touch this this lever, I mean, immediately it turns. And it's, to some that's probably a good thing. And it is a good thing. I just want to back it off a whisker more so that I can pull it, put pressure on it before it does anything. And then when I actually put like enough pressure to lift it and to actually pull that at all, then that's when it turns not just barely any pressure so i feel like that's telling me it's too tight and i'm just wearing the brake out and uh that any pressure off that turns it i'm going to probably turn that another just a whisker with the uh crescent wrench and then this side was the opposite i've had to pull back way too far so i'm just gonna i'm gonna back it off um that turn a quarter see what happens maybe i'll just do one turn see what happens and then uh, go from there and yeah and then uh we're gonna throw this thing back together um pretty much the only thing i haven't tried is changing these the brake linkage and it's just not gonna happen right now um i know it it'll end up being a lawn ornament um for too far which seems a little ridiculous but when i'm only here for a couple hours a day basically eat and sleep then i have to leave to go to work i don't have a ton of time and I really got to start cranking on this road. So we'll see what the weather holds. If it's uh, if I get a little bad stretch or some snow or whatever, I have a couple days where the snow melts off or to at least let it settle, then uh, we'll revisit it. It's only a couple bolts to access this. It's all pretty easy. And uh, yeah, so <coughs> this is a more accurate way to, uh, or more accurate video than my other one to actually to change all the clutches or adjust everything and uh the other one is kind of bogus what i did there and uh probably gonna take it off or at least put a thing to this video because this one's definitely the one someone's gonna want to see to to see how to move everything um the manual helps a lot you can just i mean anything that i need to do is probably gonna be in there it's pretty neat um so yeah that's that. This one, I'm going to leave pretty much how it is. I adjusted, I basically just undid the brakes and messed with that, that brake screw, put it back to where the book wants it, and then um, adjust out that that uh, clutch one a little bit. I'm just going to leave it leave it where it is because when you break it free, um, I was trying to figure out where to put it back because I thought you had to retighten it, and you're not supposed to. You're supposed to break it free. And then put it back to where it's like touching, not tight at all. So pretty much going to do that. It looks pretty much like over there. You can see the brakes in there a little bit. Um, this right side's definitely a little more chattered out. You can see that brake, that brake band's got some life in it. Um, and then you can see over here how it's real. I don't know. For some reason, I can't get this camera in there so you can see the pad life too well, but it's definitely a little chowdered up um compare compared to the other side that's for sure so that's gonna be that's gonna be it for right now i'm gonna throw these all together and we're gonna see how it does oh i forgot one more thing um so when you when you loosen the jam nut on the on this bell crank which is this guy um when you loosen the jam nut there you see there's a stop and the bolts on the stop and basically when you pull when you pull the brake pedal back and then adjust everything and when you adjust the brakes like the screw on the bottom 
This one had a lot of space on it uh, when I did it yesterday. And you basically tighten down that bolt and then redo the jam nut so it doesn't back off. And then that's where I got this thing to actually work. And uh, at least this side work, it's just not spectacular. So, so here we are again. Okay. Sun's just going down. But she does have lights in the back. I mean the front, not the back. And let's see if we get it to fire. I'm going to need a little more today. Oh, yeah. sticky on this thing so anyway that's how you you know go through the whole adjustment process and your clutches and stuff and end up with the same product i had before but uh some other people probably have some better luck probably those pins aren't frozen in there and and uh whew, you can you can adjust everything with you know without anything being a being a pain in the ass so anyway that's gonna end the video and I hope this is pretty helpful. I, that, just going through the manual is going to help a lot of you. I, I already know it. Um, just being able to read the manual. What I did probably won't help a lot of you. You'll probably just laugh at me. And that's okay. That's, uh, that's what I'm here to do. I'm trying to learn. And uh, we'll see if one of these days we can we can fix her up and make, make both sides turn pretty men again. And uh, I think it's going to start with those with the brake rod linkage or, what, or whatnot. But maybe... Just from all these years of being tight, I don't know. This this machine sat for five or so years before I got it with those brakes just humming tight, and they're probably not in the best shape. And along with however however long they made roads with it, you know, being being stuck like that, um, or being that tight, I don't know. So it could be just the brake bands gone. I have I have one full set of clutches and brake bands. And uh, she's probably going to go on the right side. That's what I bought it for. And at some point, probably after I build my road and when I'm done with this thing, um, she's going to get some love that she deserves and and a new clutch somewhere. Probably on the right side. And we'll see what it looks like and go from there, maybe. Because left side works and everything seems to go pretty fine over there. So, um, but anyway, that is a, that is a job for another day. Um, not super successful today, but, but that's it.
That's all I got. I'm going to go inside before you dark, get some vittles of me, and go to work in the morning. Have a good night, everybody.